Hello and welcome to the very first Cabinet Vision Guy video podcast. In this episode, I just want to cover what you can expect to get out of this podcast. First off, it's called the Cabinet Vision Guy because Cabinet Vision is going to be our main focus. Now, what is Cabinet Vision? It's a 3D engineering software produced by Vero Software. You might think, hey, it's called Cabinet Vision, so that's all it does. Think again, because we can use Cabinet Vision to make cabinets, bookshelves, furniture pieces like tables and chairs, and I've even seen people make aquariums with it. While Cabinet Vision is going to be our main focus, we will be covering other software as well, like Adobe's Photoshop and Google SketchUp. If I come across any other software that can help with the engineering portion of Cabinet Vision or the rendering portion, then uh, we'll be covering that as well. Why do we need other software though? The short answer is that we don't. We could take Cabinet Vision right out of the box, install it, plug in our key, and start making all kinds of things and be done. The other software is just there to help us take Cabinet Vision to the next level. You know what? Let me take a minute to show you what I mean by that. I've got Cabinet Vision opened up right now, so let's take a look at a reason uh, to why we might need something like Photoshop. Of course, I recommend Photoshop just because I have it. You can actually use any kind of raster-based editing software like GIMP or Pixelmator or even MS Paint if you want. So before you run out and buy Photoshop, keep in mind that there are a lot of choices out there and you can use just about any of them to accomplish what we are about to do. Okay, so back to Cabinet Vision. Let's see, if we take a look in the material catalog, we can go to the setup menu and select textures. We can see that Cabinet Vision, eh, you know, I'm just going to start calling it CV or solid depending on how I feel. So we can see that CV has a bunch of textures here for us to use, and this is a clean installation, no modifications to anything yet. The one texture that I don't have that I like to have, however, is a brushed aluminum texture. Now I can either go online and find one, or I can make one that suits my needs. This is where something like Photoshop comes in handy. So I have Photoshop here. The first thing I want to do is create a new file. Now before we go any further, we need to know how we want the texture to be applied in Cabinet Vision. If I want the image to be tiled, meaning that I want CV to place the image on the part multiple times until the whole part is filled with the image, I want to make it smaller. But if I want the texture to be placed only once on the part and have CV scale it to fit, then I would make it as large as I can. There's not really a blanket number that I can give you to get the best renderings. It's more of a trial and error process. I want this image to tile, so I will make it 200 by 200 pixels. Now that we have our image started, I'm going to just fill the background with a pure white color. Next I want to add some noise, so I need to go to the filter menu, hover over noise, and click on add noise. I want a pretty good amount of noise here, so leaving it somewhere around 80% will work. For the distribution, I want to use Gaussian. This will give me the most random pattern that I can use. Of course, we want it to be monochromatic as well, because we don't want to have all those colors that uh, adding noise will typically have. And it looks like we have what we need now, so I can click OK to apply this filter. Now it really doesn't look like any brushed aluminum patterns yet. But if we apply another filter, namely the motion blur one, we can now see that it's got this uh, brushed aluminum streak that we're all so accustomed to. So let's apply this now. If we look closely, we still have the kind of straight lines at the top and bottom of my image. If we transform the layer though, we can stretch the top and bottom evenly to get it uh, properly done. And that's it. We just have to save the image to a location where we can find it in CV. I recommend placing it in the database graphics folder, mainly because that's where all the other textures are as well. Now I want to save it as either a bitmap or a JPEG file, as these are the two formats that CV can use for textures. Now that we have that all done, I can open CV back up and click the add new button to select my new texture that we just made. And there it is. Now we just have to set some information like name, description, and what category we want it placed in. Now, those are all kind of arbitrary details that will have nothing to do with our rendering. What does have something to do with it, though, are these two checkboxes. The Don't Blend box lets us tell CV that no matter what finish is selected, it should use the color defined in the texture. Since we made our brushed aluminum a black and white image, though, we want this off so that we can reuse this texture if we wanted to. 
For instance, if we wanted to reuse this texture to make a brushed brass material. Now, if you remember, I talked about tiling the image. Checking this box lets me tell CV to do that. When it's checked, I immediately get a new set of text boxes that allows me to specify the number of units uh, for tiling. I, I say units because I'm not sure if it's 12 millimeters, 12 inches, or 12 pixels, or 12 feet, who knows. Um, it might be all, depending on certain settings, I guess. Uh, you know what, when I find out, I will tweet the answer. Now that we have this set up, we can just click the close button and make our new material. Now, why do we need a new material? We don't really need to, but uh, I'm here anyway, so might as well just do it right here. So I'm going to place or create a new material in the miscellaneous section, and it's going to be a 4x8 sheet of brushed aluminum. I want the edge color of this material to be some kind of aluminum color, so we'll use this, uh, this chrome color. I want the finish type to be a glossy one, but not metal gloss. That's a little too glossy. I've, I've already tried that out and figured I, I didn't like that too much. Hmm, uh, I think I'm going to use the laminate gloss for now. I could go and create another uh, finish type, but I think we're going to save that for another day. Now I'm going to set the same colors and finish types for the face and back as well. And now we can select the textures for the face and back of this material. Just click on the texture box here and I can select the brushed aluminum one we made. Now I don't want the edge to have this texture as real brushed aluminum wouldn't have those kind of streaks on the edges. And there you go. We now have a material that we can assign to parts and render in PhotoVision. In fact, let's let's try that out. Let's open a new job, uh, place a cabinet, and then let's add a brushed aluminum skin on the left edge of that cabinet. With this skin, you can see where that brushed aluminum material we made will come in handy. Now I just need to relocate and resize our new part to the correct dimensions, and then I can take it to the 3D view to check it out. And this is just one way we can take one software and leverage it to enhance cabinet vision. So now that we've got that out of the way, this is just one aspect of what this podcast uh, will include. Another part of this podcast will be a kind of question and answer phase. You can feel free to post questions on my Twitter account. You can send emails to my email address. You can post on my Facebook wall or my Google Plus page. Or you can post the questions on Vero's eSupport website. I can't really promise that I will get to all of your questions, but I will try my best to give you the best answer possible. Just a note though, the more complicated the question, the more complicated the answer might be, so be careful what you ask for, as you might just get it. On a side note, I'm not going to be answering technical support questions, so don't ask them, as I will just respond with a post it on eSupport and let Vero's technical support staff help you with that. Now. If I'm not getting any tweets about what you want to see, or anything in the email account, or even any posts directed to me on eSupport, I will just search around eSupport and find a popular topic to go over. Or I might just do something totally random, like go over how I'm building this TARDIS bookcase in CV that I plan on building in real life. I mean, who knows? Obviously my TARDIS isn't done yet, but I'm still working on it. So far I have some of the shelving placed, and I can open the doors. But uh, the really cool part is that I can open the doors using Cabinet Vision's standard door interface. So I can just double click on the door sections and slide this little slider over to open it up. You might be thinking, well it's a door. Of course you can do that. Well these two things aren't actually doors. They're separate objects that I built and added on. And when I slide this open, it tells those objects that you need to rotate open. Of course we will be going over how I did that when we get to that video. I think that just about does it for this episode. Any additional information that I will pass out, or give, will be posted on my Facebook page. All you have to do is go to www.facebook.com slash thecabinetvisionguy slash notes to see the list of notes available to you. For instance, the notes of this episode are going to contain links to the software I used, the software I mentioned, as well as more detailed instructions on how to create the brushed aluminum texture. I will even place a copy of the texture there for you to grab if you don't want to make it yourself. Please feel free to comment on any notes if you would like a clarification, want to say hi or thanks, or even if you just want to share an easier way of doing things. In the future I may have other internet based resources for sharing this information and I will definitely let you know if and when that happens.
Before I finish this up, I would like to give a big thanks to Hayfla America, without whom this podcast wouldn't be possible. Now, I just want to finish off with the fact that I'm a big nerd, if you didn't catch that already from my TARDIS bookshelf. <laughs> so, I'm going to end each episode with a quote from a different one of my favorite sci-fi authors each time. And here's today's quote from Douglas Adams. <laughs> 